Hey friends, welcome back to Blooming with Miss B. Today we are talking the distributive property of multiplication. So pretty much all that means is that during multiplication, there are a couple different properties that we can use to help us solve really challenging problems. So this is one of those ways. So with distributive property, we got to break the big number, share the love, and then add. Let me show you the first equation. Okay, so let's say we have four times nine. Well, nine is a really big number, so I'm gonna take that nine and break it apart into two smaller numbers, an addition equation that we can better multiply with. So what can we break that nine into? Go ahead and show me nine on your fingers. It's just like a little something like this. There are a couple different ways that we can make nine, but for now, let's use this. So I'm gonna do five plus four because that equals nine. I'm going to break up this nine, add my parentheses because this is what keeps it all together. And I'm gonna show five plus four. So now that we've broken up that nine, all that means is that for our new equation, instead of writing four times nine, we are going to write four times, and we're going to plug in that equation, parentheses and all, five plus four. So this is our new equation from here. This is where the sharing the love comes in. So originally the four only had to share its love with the nine, but now it has two new numbers. It has to share the love between both. So we're going to share the love with this five, and that's going to be its own equation now. Four times five. Don't forget the parentheses because that's what keeps it together. Because this is a plus right here, we're going to be adding right here, but we cannot forget to share the love with the other number. We don't want to leave that number out, so we're going to share the love from this four to this four, and again, add the parentheses because that holds it in. We have four times four. So now we have two separate equations that we need to solve, but they are smaller equations that are numbers that are easier for my brain. So now we have these two, let's go ahead and solve them. So what is four times five? Now, I see that five and I know I can count by fives, so I'm gonna count by five four times, ready? Five, 10, 15, 20. So four times five equals 20. Now don't forget that plus sign. Now let's solve our next equation. Our next one is four times four. So when I think of fours, I think double, double, have no troubles. So I'm going to double, double one of those fours. Let's do four plus four, which equals eight. That's one double. Second double, eight plus eight equals 16. So four times four equals 16. Now I have to solve this simple addition equation. So what is 20 plus 16. Let's make it vertical so it's easier to solve. So I'm gonna take this 16 and I'm going to add it right here. That's all I did. And now I have zero plus six equals six. Two plus one equals three. There, four, four times nine equals 36. Whew, that is big just to solve a simple four times nine but you got it. Let me tell you a really quick tip on how to recognize when you see distributive property. So when you see distributive property, you will see parentheses, okay? But distributive property has multiplication and addition. Distributive property is the only one that has both. Associative property, only multiplication or only addition. Distributive property is the only one that has multiplication and addition. All right, so four times nine is kind of a smaller number. This next one I'm gonna show you is gonna be a bigger number to show why it's so important to know distributive property. Okay, so we have three times 14. 14? I don't know how to multiply by 14. It's okay, because the first thing we need to do is, we see that big number, we got to split it up. So let's go ahead and split that 14 up. Think about how we can break up 14. Hmm, how can I break up 14? Well, if we split it right down the middle, we chop it, we'll see tens and ones. How many tens are in 14? One. So I'm gonna add my parentheses. Don't forget your parentheses. And I'm gonna do 10 plus, how many ones are in 14? Four. Does 10 plus four equal 14? 
Yes, it does. And this is our new equation. So instead of saying three times 14, we are doing three times 10 plus four. That's what we're writing. Three times, that's from right here. Now I'm going to plug in this equation right over here. Parentheses and all. 10 plus four. So we broke up the big number. Now we got to share the love. Now this three has two babies that it's got to love instead of just one. So I'm going to share the love from the three to the 10 and make its own equation. So we have three times 10. Let's go ahead and share the love with the other number. And now we have three times four. Now with these two equations, remember distributive property has multiplication and addition. So we have our multiplication right here. So what that means is we're going to be adding these two. So this addition right here, we're bringing it down right here. Let's go ahead and solve these individual equations and then we're going to add them together. So first we have three times 10. I get a count by tens. Three times, show me three. 10, 20, 30. Three times 10 equals 30. Next equation, the green one, we're going to do three times four. So again, I see that four, so I'm going to do double, double, have no trouble because I see the four. I'm going to do this with the three. Three plus three equals six. That's one double. Six plus six equals? Six plus six. Hmm. Six plus six equals 12. So I'm going to bring this 12 right over here. Now I need to solve this new one, 30 plus 12. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down here. That way it is a vertical rather than horizontal. Easier on the brain. Ones first, zero plus two equals two. Three plus one equals four. So three times 14 equals 42. There we go. That is distributed property. It about blew my mind saying I need to multiply by 14, but we just broke it up into smaller numbers that is way easier for our brains to solve. That's what distributed property is. So remember, when you come across distributed property, you need to break the big number, share the love between both, and add them together. And a little clue to spot distributed property. Distributed property has multiplication and addition. All the other properties either have only multiplication or only addition. Distributed property has both. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. Next up will be associative property. I'll see you guys there. Keep on blooming, guys. All right, so that's it for distributed property. Next up, associative property. See you there. See you there.